So first, we're going to get deep into bidding here and do a bit of math. Now, there's two overall concepts of bidding at Google. We have target. This could be target ROAS or target CPA. Conceptually, we're going to call this target because it works the same for either CPA or ROAS, how we're talking about it today. And then we have max. It could be max revenue or it could be max conversions. Again, conceptually the same thing, how we get into these. So when we look at a high level, right, what's the difference? Well, max conversions and max revenue tries to get the most conversions or revenue possible. It does not care about CPA or ROAS, and it will often spend the entire budget, no matter what it is, to try to find additional conversions or revenue. Then we have target, which could be CPA or ROAS, but it tries to hit a specific CPA or ROAS that you give it. Now, it won't spend extra budget if it doesn't think there's more conversions are possible. So it looks at a blended CPA or a blended ROAS targets. So let's do some examples. So let's say I have a $105 budget and these are the possible conversions. Now, Google doesn't know these are the actual conversions. They make some good guesswork. They don't always get it right, which is why we'll see some cheap or expensive conversions that are missed. But overall, if these are our conversions and we say max bidding, well, Max is going to say, well, there's an easy conversion at five, and here's an easy conversion at 10, and keep going and going until it hits its entire budget for the day. Now, in this case, that blended CPA would be about $16. It'd have six conversions. It would spend most of your $105 budget. Let's say we have Target. Right? Target, again, it's not perfect, so it's going to miss some conversions here or there, but it's going to find that blended CPA to hit your target or a little above or below it. It's not always perfect. Right, again, about $16 a touch more than max here. Same number of conversions. All right, that's an ideal world where the budget actually works out perfectly either way. What if we doubled our budget? I say, all right, let's double this. We want more. We like what's happening. So now Max says, hey, you gave me a whole lot more budget. I can try to get everything up to that budget number. And I don't care if there's some of these conversions at the bottom that are really expensive, 40 or 50. I have the budget. I'm going to do it. So in this case, right, Max would get you a $22 CPA and nine conversions. Now Target, right, again, tries to get to that blended number. It says, here's some cheap ones. Here's some expensive ones. I'm going to try to blend it towards a CPA, but oh, there's a couple left here at $30 and $50. But if I get them, my CPA is going to be too high. So even though I have budget left, I actually don't want to bid on them because it'll mess up what the user is trying to achieve. So in this case, Target would get $16 CPAs, but it would only have eight conversions. It'd have one less than max. So, hey, this is great. Let's raise our budget again, right? So we, we doubled it again to 400, but if you notice, the last two CPAs were changed. They were changed to really expensive numbers compared to the rest. Now, Max says, hey, I have the budget for it. I'm going to keep spending. I, I, can, I can keep spending to get everything possible. So now in this case, right, Max has gotten every single conversion. It has all 10 of them. Its CPA is $37. And it probably spent all of your budget because it's looking for even more that might be out there. Now, Target says, oh, those are going to blow away my Target. I can't get those expensive ones. So its CPA is much less, right? And its total conversions are a couple less. But you're often not hitting your budget here with target CPA. So when we look at our things like impression share loss budget, right, our target would probably be a zero in this case, where our max might have some. Because our target's, again, not spending all of its budget because it can't to reach everything. So before we say, well, I've got this $100 budget. Let me double it to see what I get. Let me double it again and see what I get. Often we want to start with some human analysis, right? To say, is this worth it? Is there even something out there we can get? So this is where we look at lost impression share due to budget. So if you're newer, impression share is the percentage of times your ad has been displayed when it's eligible to be displayed. Right? So Google's looking at not just budget, but locations and time of day and so forth. Now we lose impressions from one of two reasons. One, budget. Our budget was too low to have our ads serve the entire day. So what did we lose because our budget's too low? 
The second is rank, which is a combination of quality score and impression share, and a few other factors, but mostly, mostly your bidding and your quality scores. So now in this first campaign, we only have about a 4% impression share budget loss. So if we doubled our budget, we really wouldn't get a whole lot more of anything. It's just not there. Where the third and fourth campaigns have a 22% and 18% budget loss. So we could raise our budget. We can't double it. It's not 50% loss, but we could raise it a fair amount and get more at similar CPA ROAS targets. Generally, Google tries to serve your ads some in the morning and some in the afternoon and some in the evening, spread it out across the day. And so when you have budget loss, generally, if you add more budget, you should have similar returns to what you've already achieved in that campaign so far. So in this first one, we say, okay, our, we don't have really in budget loss impressions to gain. So what else can we look at just before we change budget if we want more? Well, second, we look at rank, right? Impression share loss rank is mostly due to either a low bid or low quality score. So if we see we have a lot of low impression share loss rank and we just give Google a lot more budget, well, max bidding would say, hey, I have more budget to spend. I can just raise bids to get more to get more what's out there. So that's its lever, right? It's raising bids because it can't change your quality score. Where target would say, well, I still can't raise my bid here because that would be above my target. So I'm going to do nothing. So often, if you have lost impression share rank, right? If you don't want to raise bids, which of course is, is not something everyone wants to do, that's when we dig in the quality score to say, can we increase our quality scores and either get our ads in higher positions or we lower our, our CPCs, which means we can show more throughout the day and get more conversions. So if you see high loss impression share rank, then max bidding, right? Max revenue or max conversions, you could raise your bids or you could raise your budget, but be careful of what that CPA becomes. So then what we often want to do, and this is the tool in thought of analysis, is say, if we raise our budget, what happens? Based on our projections, based upon what the data looks like, based on impression shares, what would happen? Because what we don't want to do is put too much money into diminishing return areas. So for instance, if we look at the first bubble here, if we raised our daily budget by $466 a day, right, we would get 159 more conversions per month. And that works out to about $87 CPA. So not too bad. Assuming 87 is within you know, a ballpark of what we're looking for. Now, if we just kept raising it and we said, hey, we could max out our conversions if we raise our daily budget by $1,500 a day, we get 219 more per month. Well, that's a $212 CPA, right? 87 to 212. So there are more there. So this is again, where we went in with a really massive budget and we said target CPA. Target's going to cut us off somewhere here. If we say max conversions, max and I say, I don't care how much these are. You told me to get the most possible. So that's why it's really important to, to sort of note the small differences. Now, the other part that fits into this is broad match. Yeah, there are strong opinions out there on broad match. Broad match is terrible. Broad match is great. Broad match is what? Except with broad match, what's really important to put in context is the bid method. So for instance, if I go in and I say this, this account, it's max revenue bidding. So we just told Google, hey, we want the most revenue possible. We don't care what the ROAS is, we want the most revenue possible. So in this case, our ROAS on our exact match is 0.96, almost break even. Our phrase match, it's exactly one, it's break even. Our broad match, it's 0.29 because we've given Google license to keep spending our budget trying to get any more incremental revenue, regardless of the ROAS of that particular revenue. And so they're allowed to take the broad match and match to all these random terms up there, which might not even have that much with our business because our bid method says we can do that. It can, it can, it can go ahead and do that. So that's why our CPAs are 54, 58, 163. 
right? Huge difference. Conversion rate, half as much for broad match. Now, what if this was target? So this account is target CPA bidding, right? They've told Google, hey, we want this specific CPA. So that's your goal. So now Google takes broad match and says, well, I could show for this term that's kind of somewhat related, but we don't think it's going to convert. And we have a CPA target, so we probably shouldn't show that that particular ad to that keyword or that search term, right? Where Google says, hey, here's a broad match term. There's a term they don't have, and that's a pretty good query. We could go ahead and serve an ad there. So broad match has almost this extra layer of thinking about the potential conversion rate, potential CPA with target bidding. Could be target CPA or target ROAS bidding. Which is why if we look at the cost per conversions, right, our exact match, of course, is super cheap. It's almost always your cheapest. But our phrase and broad are really, really close. Right. And that's what broad match is doing. In fact, the, the broad conversion rate is slightly higher than phrase match in this particular instance. None of them touch exact. Exact is generally always the best. So with target CPA bidding, often we think of broad match as expansion. We start with exact and phrase, and then we say, okay, we know these are going to convert. Then you look at your budget and say, well, could we spend more? Right. We have a budget we're not hitting and we're allowed to go ahead and spend it. Well, then if there's not more exact and phrase to add, broad's a great expansion possibility then to get more. Where if we did the same thing with max, if our goal is just the most conversions possible, then we could obviously add broad match. But if we, we don't want just the most conversions, but something within a target we're willing to work with, right? that's where target bidding works much better than max bidding. Now with broad match and even with um, any type of bidding, we want to look at as our search term data though to make sure, hey, are we serving correctly? Because machines are looking at, you know, what is the estimated conversion rate? What's the estimated bid based on your goal? What works? And they got to figure this out for everything eligible. So there are times you want to make things not eligible where you want to change how it's being done. And that's where looking at your search terms is really useful. Now, beyond just search terms, we'll get into engrams in a second. But this particular search, these search terms are for an exact match three word keyword. The keyword is the product name and the word quote. It, it's there's a, one more than 100 phrases that are five plus words. In fact, there's 50 phrases that are eight plus words. And what's interesting here is the word how much. We notice it's in every query here. Google thinks the word how much and quote mean the same thing. Now, it may or may not be true. We'll have to look at the data to see that. But where you as a human have real problems and we can leverage what machines and humans together is saying, find me the patterns. For instance, this account, there are months it spends more than $10 million a month, which means they have millions of search terms. Now, the ones in this page are 16 clicks, 7 clicks, 5 clicks, 11 clicks. No one is going to see the pattern of how much in this sea of data. So what Ngram start to do is say, let's look for patterns among the search terms. How often is the word how used? How often is how much used? How often is how much is used? How much is the word average used? What's the the, the overall data for on average, right? And let's break all these out and then re-aggregate data by these individual terms across all our search query data. So for instance, the word how, it's in 3,000 queries. Those 3,000 queries led to 10,000 clicks. So average of three clicks per query. Odds of a human seeing this, pretty low. It spent for over $400,000. So there's, a, and this is monthly. There's a lot of data on that word. It's cost per conversions over a thousand. When the word house in the query, CPA is more than a thousand. This account's average is 300. When the word how much is in the query, CPA is $1,300. When the, when the how much is price in the query, it's $1,500. So this is where you can find insights 
that Google doesn't have. Google does not use n-grams for bidding. That's is actually not part of how their system is. They work on the search query and the intent of the whole search query. They're not looking at n-gram data. So now the machine can find this, right? And say, hey, there's something you need to look at. This is an easy thing for a machine to find. Now, you as a human need to now use your brain. What do you want to do? A, we can make it a negative keyword. Um, we could say, you know what? The problem here is the ads don't, or the ads on landing page aren't right. We could change ads. We could change landing page. Um, we could say, you know what? There's those conversions here that are really high. So maybe we want to make a top of funnel campaign or a discovery type of campaign and make it make the, our primary campaign a negative keyword how and move them to a different one with a different budget and, and get something of what is there. Right. Those are your options. So that's where we have the, the machine says, hey, you need to look at this and you say, what do I want to do with this? In many ways, blending machines and creativity is actually the machine doing the number crunching and then saying, I found an anomaly. And then the human saying, OK, I need to interpret this. I need to use my brain and say, what do I do with that? So when we think about our bidding and we say, which one should we use? Right. Well, if you have a low conversion data, you have less than 15 conversions a month in a campaign. Machine learning has a real hard problem figuring out enough data consistency to bid a target for you. So you're probably going to use max with low data. Now, other time is you don't care about the CPA ROI, so you just want the most conversions possible. That's what Max is good at. It's great at the most conversions possible, regardless of what it costs you. Now, be real careful about using broad match with the Max, though, because that's where you get under the crazy queries, because Google says, hey, you gave me license to spend this. Now, if you have a specific ROAS or CPA you're trying to achieve, and you have at least 15 conversions per month per campaign. Target's usually a much, much better option, right? And this is where broad match can be a useful expansion tool in this case.